this is part 13 of entity framework tutorial in this video we'll discuss the concept of table splitting in entity framework with code first approach we we'll discuss table splitting with database first approach in part 12 in this video we'll be working with the same example that we worked with in part 12 so please watch part 12 before proceeding in general mapping multiple entities to a single table is called table splitting in this video we'll discuss mapping these two entities that is employee and employee contact detail entities to this employees table let's see how to achieve this using the code first approach let's flip to visual studio so this is the same project that we worked with in the previous session so far what i have done is deleted the adio.net entity data model that we have generated using the designer and i have also removed the connection string from web.config file so first to this project let's add a class file but before that i should mention this webform1.aspx file and its code behind have not changed in any way this is the same thing as what we have in the previous session so let's add to this project a new class file and let's call this employee.cs and this class is going to have these four properties so let's copy and paste them within the employee class employee ID first name last name gender and let's add another class file to this project let's call this employee contact detail.cs and this class is going to have these properties employee ID email mobile landline another thing that we need to do here is establish a navigation property from the employee entity to employee contact detail entity and let's name the property employee contact detail along the same lines employee contact detail entity is going to have a navigation property to employee entity all right the next step is to add a DB context class and for that purpose let's add a new class file and let's call this employee DB context.cs and this class needs to inherit from the DB context class which is present in system.data.entity namespace so let's go ahead and bring that in first and then make this class inherit from DB context class and this employee DB context class is going to have a public property which is going to return DB set of employee instances and let's call this employees so this employee DB context class is going to override a method that is present in the base class that is on model creating method and this is where we tell you know what we want to map to what so we want to map both employee entity and the employee contact detail entity to a table called employees okay so let's see how to do that and this is how we do it notice that we are mapping employee entity to employees table and the key being employee ID property similarly here we are mapping employee contact detail entity to employees table employee ID property being the key okay and the last line here is establishing the referential constraint in part 12 we have seen how to do that using the designer notice that we have specified the principal is employee and the dependent is employee contact detail okay and the same thing if we have to do it in code we uh, use has required and with required principal properties notice that here you know the principal is employee okay and employee contact detail is dependent let's copy and paste this code with an on model creating method so let's copy this code from here let's format this a little okay it's the same code that we had on the slide the next step is to include the connection string within the web.config file so let's go ahead and copy this connection string and paste that within the connection string section and if you notice here we have specified the name of the database is sample and we already have the sample database so let's go ahead and delete the database first and then when we run this webform1.aspx you know it should automatically create the sample database create employees table you know both employee 
and employee contact details should be mapped to that table. So first let's build this project to make sure we don't have any compilation errors. So build succeeded. Let's go ahead and run this web form. And we don't have any code in page load so nothing will happen. So let me check this box and then click this button. The web form itself is not going to display any data because the employees table um, that is going to be created will be empty basically. So now let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio, refresh this, and there we go. We have the sample database, and if we expand this, we should have the employees table there. Now let's execute this insert script here to populate that table with some test data. So we have some test data right now. So let's go ahead and uh, click this button. But before we do that, let's actually fire up SQL Profiler and then look at the queries that are generated. So let's use Windows Authentication. OK, the trace is running now. Let's go ahead and click this button. Let's go back to SQL Profiler. Look at the query that is generated. Now, since we mentioned, I mean, since we have checked that tech checkbox, include contact details, all the columns are retrieved, employee ID, first name, last name, gender, email, mobile, and landline from employees table. Now let's actually uncheck the checkbox and then click this get employee data. Notice that we only have first name, last name, gender displayed, but let's look at the query. Look at the query, you know, only employee ID, first name, last name, and gender column values are retrieved from the database. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.